are you guys fans of Ragnar Lodbrok are you guys wondering why he's never used in rise of kingdoms do you think that he's so cool looking that you just wish there was a way to make him OP well great news ladies and gentlemen because today we're going to be talking about how you can turn Ragnar from a useless commander into an OP meme machine what's going on guys cheers hey i know you're not subscribed okay statistically 80 percent of you guys are not subbed which means you're not which means you should go down there and click that button if you want to or not it, it's fine but i yeah hey i gotta at least shoot my shot okay anyway ragnar one of the things i appreciated about working with snaps in some of my previous videos if you haven't checked him out go ahead and do that he's the the lubu guy okay with the charlemagne one of the things i appreciated the most is i started to think about commanders that i never really think about okay and that got me thinking a little bit about ragnar because ragnar is really cool looking he's a viking okay he's a freaking marauder look at the golden armor look at the beard okay look at the sword look at your boy okay Okay, he's he's sick all right and people don't use him so I wanted to you know maybe make a series here on the channel where we talk about ways where like sure the commander's not good but if you wanted to use him this is like sort of the best way that you could do that if you wanted to and maybe you know you, you won't great, get great results but it's just a way to sort of think outside the box and think about commanders that nobody really talks about okay so let's start that series here with Ragnar okay so before we talk about the strategy we're going to use to sort of make Ragnar a little bit more usable we have to understand what he's doing okay because a lot of you guys probably don't remember he came into the game a year ago and nobody used him so we kind of forgot so let's understand what Ragnar is doing okay his active skill uh gives you 30 percent increase in damage and 15 percent damage taken reduction for four seconds that's a pretty good buff right okay that's pretty solid uh, you're not doing like uh, skill damage or aoe damage or, or anything like that but hey 30 percent all damage is, is solid okay second skill gives 20 percent attack and that doesn't matter what troop type it is it's just any troop type gets 20 percent extra attack and you have a 10 percent chance of reducing the enemy healing effects by 40 percent for three seconds that part doesn't really matter that much there's not that much healing out in the open field these days so whatever it is what it is third skill 10 percent increased damage on hitting cities don't even hit a city with Ragnar don't worry about that skill at all Fourth skill 10 percent increased troop capacity great news also 10 percent increased rally troop capacity that I don't really care about either but hey you're bringing more troops to the open field that's sick now the cool thing and the, the piece of the puzzle that we can sort of unlock here with Ragnar um is that his expertise gives him 40 percent increased damage and you take 20 percent reduced damage and it's for five seconds okay that doesn't sound like a huge jump but four seconds to five seconds is a 25 percent increase in the duration of that skill which is important okay that's like a whole extra turn which is key for how we're going to unlock Ragnar's a uh, tiny bit of hidden uh potential uh but but wait there's more okay there's actually more because Ragnar was the beneficiary okay he got, he was blessed with a relic the Viking drinking horn hey brother cheers okay let me let me drink from my uh, I'll have a coke out of my Viking drinking can so this relic gives you 20 percent troop defense and just like his second skill this does not care about the troop type you can have any troop type here it doesn't matter you get 20 percent increased defense and on top of that you reduce the normal attack damage you take by 10 percent that's actually pretty sick because you're already taking 20 percent reduced damage for five seconds and, and you're also getting 20 percent defense so this actually is making you a little bit more tanky which is pretty good okay that's pretty good because of the commanders that we're going to be pairing Ragnar with to make all of this possible okay now what if I told you that on top of the relic buffs uh you could get the buffs from Ragnar's primary skill uh right and, and we're gonna go we're gonna go back to that you can get the expertise buffs the 40 percent increased damage and 20 percent uh, damage taken reduction you can have that 80 percent of the time or more right you could have potentially that those buffs forever you can have them up all the time or at the very least about 80 percent of the time this will be the case that's pretty good okay that's pretty good I mean seriously that's crazy especially when it is actually like five out of six is really what what the math comes out to which is higher than 80 percent um, but there's also the possibility that it could be more often than that meaning six out of six turns which is 100 percent of the time so let's talk about that now okay there's two commanders that can unlock this potential for Ragnar and I'm sure many of the veteran viewers right now already know where I'm going but a lot of you guys who are watching are probably new because new players are the ones most interested in Ragnar because he is featured in many of the ads he's also really badass and the first time you get him you probably want to use him one of those commanders 
is Genghis Khan. He's not great, but you could do it. Uh, and the other one is Zhang Yu, who is much better. And you should definitely do this with Zhang Yu if you plan on doing this at all. Um, but if you don't have Zhang Yu, it's early in the game. You could try this with, with Genghis Khan if you want to. Okay. And why are these two commanders, the two that can unlock the potential for Ragnar? Well, one, the active skill 900 rage requirement and the fourth skill reduces that further by 50. So Zhang Yu 850 rage requirement. And also if you take a look at uh, Genghis Khan, same thing with your boy uh 950 here reduce it by 100 on the second skill that makes it 850 effectively okay so it takes 150 less rage to fire off the first uh active skill with these two commanders specifically and they both have the skill tree which means they have an extra rage engine built in with rejuvenate you also get burning blood and you get undying fury these three things are key to making this possible and on top of that you can influence it even more by giving the commander a horn of fury okay this will give you a 30 percent chance to get an extra 50 rage and the sooner that this happens in the battle the sooner you start to snowball your rage uh to a point where you're gonna have it happen uh pretty frequently okay you're gonna have this buff at least five out of six turns if not uh all, pretty much all the time okay and the way that you would have it more frequently is if there's like a Joan of Arc nearby that's buffing you or a William that hits multiple targets nearby and it gives you extra rage or something like that um it's possible that you could push this to where you have that Ragnar buff all the time um and 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 you know that it's possible it's not guaranteed though so we're going to talk about how you can have this buff up pretty much all the time a little all the time with a little asterisk next to it how about that okay that's that's nice nice little clickbait there now of course this video we're talking about Ragnar but I'm gonna use Caesar to demonstrate what I'm talking about because Caesar doesn't need to be expertise to get the five second buff okay so really what we care about here is just the timing we're just testing the timing and Caesar and expertise Ragnar have the same timing and that's why we're gonna do it this way okay I'm not gonna expertise my Ragnar for this video okay don't even think about that that's crazy all right that's crazy all right so we're going over here and we're attacking boys we're attacking this level 24 barbarian with our Genghis Khan primary and let's say it's an expertise Ragnar secondary because it's the same timing okay it's the same timing you can see here we're regenerating a ton of rage we're popping off basically and you can see that these skills they're they're, they're so close together that they're basically overlapping you still see the animation for um caesar by the time that it's time for khan to pop off his skill like it's just constantly one skill then the next skill then the next skill then the next skill that's how this works um and again this is going to be the same thing with ragnar secondary and that's the power of khan and of zhang yu that's what makes them so cool with their lower rage requirement is that they just pop off okay they're popping off <laughs> okay and as you can see here the battle is over let's scroll down here and uh let's take a look so our first uh skill happens on turn eight and then our first time that we have what we'll call Ragnar fired their skill at turn 10 okay so turn 10 we see Ragnar's skill goes off you get the effects on the next turn so it's going to be for five turns so that means that we would have Ragnar's buff on turn 11 12 13 14 and 15. Okay. This would be the last uh, turn that we would have Ragnar's buff. And you could see that here indomitable army that sees your skill. This would be the effect would end at the start of the next turn. So that is true. But the turn after that turn 16, uh, you know, th that's the turn where we don't have the buff. Um, but it is also, it happens to be the turn where Ragnar would pop his skill again, which is pretty sick, which means that you wouldn't have the buff on this turn but starting on turn 17 you would have it again out of these six turns um from turn 11 to turn 16 one of those times you one of those turns you wouldn't have that buff okay um and, and as you go through the battle report um you'll kind of see the same thing and in fact um there there again I, like I said before there will be instances where you will have this up all the time I, I mean if you take a look here I mean look at the skill cycle we're hitting them with a skill on turn 38 then 40 and then 44 and 46 and then 49 like it's actually insane how often we're popping off these skills right so if we take a look at turn 51 for example you'll see that there's still the buff here okay which is it's Caesar's buff but we'll call him Ragnar um, we still have the buff it ends on the next turn but great news that's actually the turn where it's cast again which means next turn it doesn't actually end it starts again so even without any outside influence, there's no Joan of Arcs around, there's no Williams around. Um, I was still able to pull off an instance where I just, I gained the buff the same turn it would have gone away, which effectively means I would have it 
up all the time right now again that doesn't mean that it will persist throughout the rest of the fight that way because if you look at turn 63 um I don't have the buff here from Caesar on the turn that I cast it again so it's hit or miss whether you would have it up 100 percent of the time or not but certainly if you're fighting the open field and there's a couple of Jones or Williams around um the probability that you would have it up at 100 percent of the time is much higher and again I think that's pretty cool especially if this is paired with Zhang Yu because that means that your Zhang Yu is gonna have 40 percent increased damage for his skill shot uh and Zhang Yu's gonna take 20 percent reduced damage on top of the 10 percent normal attack uh damage taken reduction which is huge because Zhang Yu's a glass cannon uh and again this is a meme army okay this is like if if you want someone to be like holy shit, how did i take so much damage from a ragnar this is how you would do it even though a zhang Yu ragnar getting swarmed in the open field is gg feel your hospital right so again i i'm not making the case that ragnar is meta okay I'm just making the case that like this is one way you could use him if you wanted to now with that being said um let's say you want to use ragnar as a primary which means that this strategy is just not not possible you just you can't do it with a Ragnar primary he's got the attack tree um and you know he just he doesn't have the rage requirement of, of 850 like the others have so it's not something you can do but this is the talent build that you could sort of start to play around with if you wanted to do a Ragnar primary and again I, I don't recommend a Ragnar primary if I saw a Ragnar primary I would swarm the shit out of that but if you wanted to this is something that this is like sort of probably the best that you could do with the Ragnar primary okay you would come up all the way here uh to, to to maximize close formation okay that says when this army led by this commander has been reduced to 50 percent strength uh increase attack by 12 percent which that will happen okay that will happen with Ragnar um you also want to come over here and uh and grabbed armored to the teeth not to be confused with armed to the teeth this is armored to the teeth okay and this actually uh says when you have three or more different units um all damage taken is reduced by three percent now again if you have Ragnar primary you will probably have mixed troops okay so that's something to consider um and again I, I know we're looking at Caesar here but that's just because this website doesn't have Ragnar so if anyone has a website just like this that with that lets me do this let me know in the comment section below but anyway um with the attack tree which again Ragnar has um you're gonna come over here and you're gonna grab effortless okay this is the most effortless choice this is the best probably talent that you can get it says during battles increases all damage dealt by two and a half percent every 10 seconds up to a maximum of 10 percent so after a certain amount of time you will have 10 percent increased all damage hey that's pretty sick okay um and then i also came over here and uh i grabbed fight to the death okay it says increases all damage by six percent but also increase all damage taken by three percent so um you're just sort of maximizing the damage you're dealing before you're inevitably gonna die because again we're talking about ragnar primary here and again if you're using ragnar primary you're not dealing any skill damage with ragnar and whoever your secondary is there's a chance they won't be dealing skill damage either right you, you're you're probably a free to play player maybe you're gonna have a you know a Caesar back there or you're gonna have like a Trajan back there or something like that that's just not really dealing much skill damage um and so if that's the case then I would say grab martial mastery increase the normal attack damage by six percent but reduce the skill damage dealt which again you wouldn't be dealing much um I also would grab buckler shield you reduce your counter attack damage you take by nine percent which is sick because you're already reducing the normal attack damage you're taking by ten percent so you're just doing a lot of uh, damage taken reduction here which is nice you're also grabbing uh but what is this burning blood over here a six additional rage and also hidden wrath in the leadership tree um is going to give you rage when you're attacked so if you start to get surrounded you're gonna actually deal uh or sorry regenerate more rage that way as well so again this is my talent build for Ragnar if you want to use him primary and just kind of ignore the uh the combo that I just talked about with Genghis Khan and uh Zhang Yu I don't recommend Ragnar primary but that's what I would do now when it comes to equipment on your Ragnar okay you're gonna focus primarily on a single troop type and I know that it's gonna be a mixed army I get that but the ratio of of command of troops is not gonna be even across the board you're gonna have a majority of one unit even though you have three units in the three different types of units in the army if you guys don't know what I'm talking about Wick gaming made a video a long time ago talking about which uh troop type should be the majority in your leadership army um so go ahead and check that out but like if you're Germany for example you want to have most of your army be filled with infantry okay uh, and what that means is that you would want to have a full infantry set on your Ragnar pretty much that's to say with leadership talents okay that's and that's why it's like difficult to understand because most people aren't even going to have talented equipment for leadership anyway so just don't use Ragnar primary okay anyway guys if you enjoyed this video make sure you let me know in the comment section below if you want me to make other videos talking about older commanders and like sort of ways that you 
could use them if you wanted to even though they're still not meta and they're still not great make sure to drop a thumbs up on the video it really helps out the channel a ton subscribe to the channel and click that bell to be notified the next time that I upload a rise of kingdoms video I also have a second YouTube channel link will be in the description below make sure you follow me over on there as well as my other socials and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been Omniarch I will talk to you guys again soon peace